About 100 million years ago, Earth looked entirely different. There were no humans. Fearsome animals dominated the planet. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were so enormous that they were taller than buildings, with jaws so strong they could crush bones in a second. They were incredibly fast, running at speeds of around 90 kilometers per hour. These truly fearsome creatures ruled Earth for more than 170 million years. But then, one day, something happened that completely wiped them off the planet. What exactly happened? and how. Let's understand this in today's video. As it gets closer to the planet, the Earth's gravitational pull gets stronger. They now can't see what's headed their way. Before starting this video, I would like to recommend spending your time watching informational and educational content. There are thousands of ways to waste time on social media, but by watching such videos, you gain a better understanding of the world and acquire valuable knowledge. If you want to watch more educational videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thanks. The word dinosaur originated from Greek, from the words dinos and sauros. Dinos means terrible and sauros means lizard, a terrible lizard. This is the literal meaning of the word dinosaur. The word was used for the first time in 1841 when a dinosaur fossil was discovered. Richard Owen, a British scientist, coined the term. At that time, people did not know much about dinosaurs or their appearance, so the initial drawings of how dinosaurs might have looked are vastly different from what we know now. Megalosaurus was one of the first fossils to be discovered. Look at the initial drawings of it. Decades later, as researchers discovered more information about dinosaurs, the drawings were modified to make them more realistic. The depictions now look like this. Today, more than 10,000 dinosaur fossils have been unearthed by paleontologists worldwide, and more than 900 distinct species have been identified. You might be excited by the prospect of discovering more fossils, but interestingly, from 2003 to 2022, an average of about 45 new species of dinosaurs have been identified each year. The work of paleontologists is far from over. Look at the photos of the new species of dinosaurs discovered in 2021. One of them is a bizarre dinosaur discovered in Chile, with a weapon that looks like a blade on its tail and a beak for a mouth. It was named Stegouros elengassin. Overall, we know a lot about dinosaurs today. But come, let's start this story at the beginning. Let's dive into the past. Millions of years ago, scientists estimate that the first dinosaur emerged about 230 to 240 million years ago because the oldest dinosaur fossils that we have found until now are 231.4 million years old found in Africa. At that time, Earth was much different than it is today. The continents that you see now, Asia, Africa, Australia, Europe, were all joined together. There was only one supercontinent that we call Pangaea. Scientists believe that Pangaea looked somewhat like this. You can even see the placement of the continents that we know today. At that time, the climate of Earth was dry and arid, with only a little rain. This time period has been named the Triassic period, the era when the dinosaurs had started emerging. Dinosaurs were slowly populating the Earth due to evolution. The dinosaurs of this era weren't anything like the ones you imagine. They were quite small in size. The common dinosaurs of the time were generally around two meters long. For example, the raptor was a dinosaur that existed in that period. In fact, this dinosaur is known as the ancestor of other dinosaurs. 
The dominant animals of the era were giant reptiles. Some of these reptiles looked cute, like this one that's believed to be the ancestor of all turtles. With time, Earth started changing. Approximately 201 million years ago, the Triassic period ended when Earth's climate changed suddenly. The Pangaea started breaking apart. Although I am using the word suddenly, it didn't happen in a day or two. It was relatively sudden on the time scale of millions of years. It happened gradually over thousands of years. Fissures appeared in the supercontinent. Large-scale volcanic eruptions took place on and around these fissures. Due to the numerous volcanic eruptions, a large amount of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide was released into the atmosphere. This caused intense global warming. When the sulfur dioxide and aerosols entered the atmosphere, they blocked sunlight and caused some cooling. Acidification of the ocean started when the carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide mixed with the water. The acidity of the ocean water increased. The climate was changing rapidly, and survival became difficult for the animals that existed. Most reptiles and other species back then were cold-blooded animals. They couldn't withstand the temperature changes. But the dinosaurs were warm-blooded, like humans. It was easier for the dinosaurs to tolerate the temperature changes. For about 600,000 years, the volcanic eruptions and climate change continued. Due to this, almost all other species became extinct. The only animals remaining on Earth were the dinosaurs, crocodiles, turtles, and early mammals. This event is known as the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event. As I mentioned, after this, the Triassic period ended and the Jurassic period began. If this sounds familiar, it's because the name inspired the title of the Jurassic Park films. The word Jurassic refers to this Jurassic period. The Jurassic period lasted from 201 million years ago to 145 million years ago. During this time, dinosaurs emerged as the most dominant species on the planet. Due to evolution, some of them became quite large in size, like some of the earliest titanosaurs. They lived around 160 million years ago. Each of them weighed up to 15,000 kilograms and could be up to 15 meters long. Some other iconic dinosaurs of that time were Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, and Stegosaurus. During the Jurassic period, some flying dinosaurs also evolved. One of the first feathered dinosaurs was Archaeopteryx. It looked somewhat like this. At this time, the Pangaea supercontinent had divided into two smaller supercontinents. We named them Laurasia and Gondwanaland. Due to the Jurassic Park films, the Jurassic period is the most widely known. But it was the next period when dinosaurs truly flourished, the Cretaceous period. During this time, there was an explosion in the diversity of dinosaurs and several new species evolved. The T-Rex, perhaps the most famous dinosaur to be shown in films, existed in the Cretaceous period. It reached peak dominance only at the end of the Cretaceous period, around 65 to 68 million years ago, though this is debated among researchers. Most scientists believe that T-Rex didn't exist in the Jurassic period. It's quite ironic that in the film Jurassic Park, T-Rex is used for their logo. The Cretaceous period was the longest time in the era of dinosaurs. Starting around 145 million years ago, it lasted until 65 million years ago. The two supercontinents, Laurasia and Gondwanaland, started breaking up and the structure of the continents began to look similar to what we see today. Several flowering plants evolved around this time, and the average temperature of the Earth was warmer than it had been in the past. Sea levels were quite high, and almost all kinds of dinosaurs that you can imagine existed during this period. Raptors, armored dinosaurs, giant herbivorous dinosaurs, and dangerous carnivorous dinosaurs. Titanosaurs, one of the largest land animals, 
and Argentinosaurus, which could weigh up to 77 tons. T. rex, believed to be the apex predator of its time, could grow up to 40 feet long and had the strongest and most powerful jaws compared to any other animal. A fun fact, the evolution of grass began only 70 million years ago. In the story that I've been telling you, don't imagine that only grass was growing on the planet. Many other kinds of plants were also flourishing at the same time. T. rex and Triceratops evolved 68 million years ago. Do you know what this means? We are closer in time to T. rex than T. rex was to the Jurassic period. Since there's an 80 million year gap between the Jurassic period and the evolution of T. rex, but only 68 million years between us and T. rex. Another interesting dinosaur that existed then were the ornithomimids. They looked like ostriches and were among the fastest dinosaurs, capable of running at speeds up to 80 kilometers per hour. And in terms of flying rather than running, the largest flying dinosaur was Quetzalcoatlus, which had a wingspan of 10 to 11 meters. As you can see, this was the most prosperous period for dinosaurs. The climate was favorable, new species were evolving, and there were no other animal species to compete with them. They dominated the earth. Everything was going well, until one day, something happened that completely wiped out the dinosaurs forever. A massive asteroid, with a diameter of roughly 10 to 15 kilometers, came hurtling towards Earth and collided with it. This occurred 66 million years ago, and this impact marked the end of the Cretaceous period. The speed of the asteroid was 30 kilometers per second, 150 times faster than a jet airliner. Specifically speaking, it hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, the same place where, millions of years later, the Mayan tribe emerged and built historical wonders like Chichen Itza. When the asteroid hit Earth, it created a large crater with a diameter of 180 kilometers. Due to its impact, energy was released at such a speed that could be released with 100 teratons of TNT. If you compare this with the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the asteroid produced one billion times more energy than those bombs. This was such a big impact that everything around it disintegrated in the blink of an eye. The impact threw a lot of soil into the air. The land heated up and the hot dust rained over other areas. The global temperatures rose by several degrees for hours. All animals within thousands of kilometers of range from the impact were cooked alive by the sheer heat. It is believed that only small animals could survive the impact of this initial blast because they found underground shelter or they hid underwater, in caves, or in large tree trunks. But this was only the initial impact. This was followed by shock waves, heat pulses, wildfires in the forests for thousands of kilometers, and large tsunamis. It is speculated that there would have been an immediate tsunami with a two kilometer tall wave. Can you even imagine a two kilometer tall tsunami wave? Volcanic eruptions started once again. Acid rain fell and earthquakes occurred. The short term effects were quite deadly, but you would think that on the other side of the earth, which wasn't hit, animals could have perhaps survived. However, the long term consequences were even deadlier. The dust particles in the air blocked sunlight for the next year all around the planet. The planet went into a nuclear winter. The temperature dropped drastically. It is estimated that for the next three years, the Earth experienced freezing temperatures. This killed many plants and animals. Since the sunlight was blocked for one year, it was impossible for plants to use photosynthesis. The plants died. With dying plants, the herbivorous animals had nothing to eat, and they died out. Even the carnivorous animals were left with nothing to eat, and they too died out. A chain reaction was caused. The only animals safe from these consequences were small omnivorous animals, such as mammals, lizards, turtles, and some birds. 
These animals could survive because they could live as scavengers, feeding on dead dinosaurs, fungus, and decaying plant matter. These were the foods that kept them alive. Small animals could survive longer. The impact of the asteroid destroyed several carbonate rocks, causing carbon and sulfur to be released into the atmosphere. For the next several thousand years, the sunlight was significantly reduced and was not at normal levels. Apart from this, acid rain continued for thousands of years. When the nuclear winter ended and the dust in the atmosphere settled down, sunlight reached the planet once again. However, the problem was that a large quantity of carbon dioxide had already been released into the atmosphere, causing intense global warming. Think about it. One asteroid changed Earth's history for the next thousands of years. If we ignore a few exceptions, none of the four-legged creatures weighing more than 25 kilograms could survive this event. All terrestrial dinosaurs went extinct, and with them, the plant and animal species once thriving on Earth. More than 75% of it went extinct. At this point, the Cretaceous period ended, and the next era began, the Paleogene period. It wasn't as if everything had ended. This event was like an opportunity for the rest of the animal species. The rulers of the planet, the dinosaurs, were no more. So it was an opportunity for other animals to rise and rule. Humans should be thankful for this asteroid because it provided a good opportunity for the evolution of mammals. After the extinction of the dinosaurs, the gap in the food chain left by the dinosaurs was filled by several mammals. It was in this period that we saw the evolution of horses, whales, bats, and primates. Several snakes and smaller lizards also started emerging in this period. The only group of dinosaurs that survived were the flying dinosaurs. Over time, they evolved and became the birds that we now know. Yes, you heard that right. The birds you see flying around today are descendants of flying dinosaurs. Most studies have confirmed that birds belong to the same family as dinosaurs. Specifically, ancestry is most closely shared by chickens and ostriches. This is why people might say that the closest living relative of the T-Rex, a fearsome dinosaur, is a chicken. You might have a question about the asteroid. How did we find out where it crashed and that it crashed 66 million years ago? How did we determine the date? This is evidenced by a rare mineral, iridium. Scientists discovered that in a few places on Earth, there is a high concentration of iridium in the ground. However, when geologists analyzed the Earth's crust, they found that iridium is a very rare mineral here. Despite its rarity, it is so abundant in certain layers of the ground. How could this be? This could happen because comets and asteroids have a high concentration of iridium. When scientists used carbon dating on the iridium, they found that the iridium layer is 66 million years old. This could have happened only when the asteroid hit the planet, and in the ensuing blast, this mineral spread all around. You might also wonder, since the asteroid had such a significant impact, shouldn't we be able to see the crater it left on Earth? Well, you are not wrong, but an event that occurred so long ago, 66 million years ago, might not look like you'd imagine. Since then, the continents have been relentlessly shifting. The crater from this asteroid is hidden in the Yucatan Peninsula. However, several digging expeditions have confirmed that it indeed happened and pinpointed the exact location. If you look at the map, this is the precise location. Half of it is submerged under the sea, and the other half is on land. A real-world impact that we can still see today are the cenotes in this Mexican area. These beautiful sinkholes form a pattern, revealing the crater formed by the asteroid. The cenotes can be found in a ring formation around the crater. Nowadays, they are famous tourist attractions. You can go swimming in these sea notes, and overall, 
These cenotes form the world's largest underground cave system. After hearing this astounding story of the asteroid strike, you might be thinking about what would happen if such an asteroid were to hit the planet now. Will humans go extinct? This is definitely a threat. The asteroids that might hit Earth in the foreseeable future are known as near-Earth asteroids. NASA and other space agencies are continuously tracking all near-Earth asteroids to compute their paths and determine if and when they will collide with Earth. As of April 2022, more than 28,000 near-Earth asteroids have been identified, of which more than 800 have a diameter of one kilometer or more. This is a scary number. So many asteroids that may potentially collide with Earth. But today, you don't need to be scared about this because scientific calculations are so advanced that we can clearly predict their paths and calculate the exact location of the impact. We can even estimate the chances of an asteroid actually colliding with Earth. And if they are indeed on a collision course, we can take measures to stop it. This was the idea behind NASA's DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test, space mission launched in 2021. They plan to have a spacecraft collide with an asteroid so that its path can be altered. If in the future there is an asteroid about to collide with Earth, we can change its trajectory. This might sound like science fiction, but this idea was already successful. In September 2022, a test was conducted on an asteroid that was not on a collision course with Earth. NASA sent a spacecraft to it, which collided with the asteroid and altered its path. If they could successfully do it to that asteroid, it can be done to any asteroid on a trajectory towards Earth in the future. However, this doesn't mean there is no danger at all. Humans themselves pose a significant threat. The asteroid strike that killed the dinosaurs is known as the fifth extinction event in Earth's history. After this, scientists believe that the sixth extinction event has already begun. This isn't due to any volcano or asteroid. It is caused by humans. This event is named the Holocene Extinction Event. Over the last 100 to 200 years, we have seen an unprecedented loss of biodiversity. Animal and plant species are rapidly going extinct due to human activities. Biologists agree that it is a mass extinction. Deforestation by humans and pollution in oceans and the atmosphere have accelerated extinction rates to more than 100 to 1,000 times the normal rate. The habitats of existing animals are being destroyed and thousands of mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians are now endangered or have already gone extinct due to human actions. To address this destruction, a United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity meeting was held in Japan in 2010. 20 biodiversity targets were set to be achieved by 2020. Unfortunately, only six of those have been partially achieved. In January 2020, a new Paris-style plan was established to prevent biodiversity and ecosystem collapse, with a deadline set for 2030. Its purpose is to ensure that 30% of the land and oceans are given protected status. It's interesting to note that, according to calculations, humans originated merely 300,000 years ago in Africa. In comparison, dinosaurs were the dominant species on Earth for 174 million years. We've been here for only 300,000 years, while they lived for 174 million years, 600 times longer than humans. What do you think? Can humans beat the record set by dinosaurs, or will we go extinct before reaching 1 million years? Comment below with your opinion. Obviously, the right answer will depend on our collective efforts to save this planet. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to watch more videos on historical and science-related topics. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.